Why do you say dot plots don't matter? I think that dot plots are a form of expectation setting by the Fed. And mm -hmm. we tend to take them too literally. So today, everybody's assumption is we're going to get three increases this year, two next year. So we're all caught up in, will it be four this year, and maybe three next year, or four this year, and two next year? What's it going to be? That's the crux of our show, Dan. Yes. But <laughs> I'm here to tell you that I think that we are in what I call Phillips curve Goldilocks territory. Okay. The Phillips curve is the Fed's effort to optimize the balance between but there's employment, a dot plot, by the way. Okay. Between, between employment and inflation. And I actually think that it's easier than it looks because we are not at full employment. Even though the unemployment rate is down at 4%, mm -hmm. we are not at full employment because Why? the more robust unemployment rate, which includes people who have given up looking for jobs, the U6 employment rate, is about 8%. The labor participation rate ticked up slightly in the last reading from 62.7% to 63%, mm -hmm. but it's still hovering around 40-year lows. So a lot of people are out of the workforce, even though a lot of jobs are being created, and wages are going up a little bit because the jobs that are being created are high-paid jobs requiring high education. So on the labor side, we have plenty of workers. So there's plenty of we're, slack we're, in the labor market. There's slack in the labor market, okay. and we've also, on the inflation side, we're living in a disinflationary world. Technology is making things cheaper mm -hmm. across the board and giving people more purchasing power because a dollar goes farther in every area of society. As a result, what we're seeing from, from technology is improvements in labor productivity, right. not because people are working harder because they're getting paid more, yeah. but because they're working less because technology is taking some of the burden. Well, Dan, I want to just pull up a chart that just kind of affirms, perhaps, or underscores what you're saying in a different way. G hashtag BTV2420. You know, we love our charts here, and it just uh, just shows you how job openings, yes, they're they're going up. The trend has been going up, and which you know signals a, a more robust labor market. But hiring has been really quite flat, quite slow. So you know, there's job openings, but just employers okay, are being a little bit. Okay, but we had 313,000 jobs created last month. That's mm -hmm. a big uptick. Was an upside surprise so I'm basically quite bullish I, I'm not worried about the Fed I'm not worried about Powell being an uber hawk or anything they know what they're doing and they know about all of these um, circumstances and conditions that in the economy including the really important impact of technology right. in industry and so I think we're not going to get any radical surprises whether we get four rate increases this year and two next year, or even four and three instead of three and Not two, gonna make much I don't think it's going to make a difference. Dan, you know, Steve Mnuchin seems confident that we can get wage growth in the United States without inflation. Is that how it works? I do think that we can get some wage growth without inflation, but we don't necessarily need to get a tremendous amount of wage growth if expenses are stable to declining. People don't necessarily need to see their wages grow up if the cost of things is going down. Dan, I want to throw up this quick chart. It's G hashtag BTV 8924. And I suppose it, it goes to whether the market is getting ahead, it's ahead of itself when it comes to inflation expectations. Inflation, as we see, hasn't really moved that much over the last couple of quarters or so. Uh, Treasury yields have been steadily climbing. We had another move up in, in the last session. Where do you think the bond market is going to be by the end of this year? Because we still have a lot of people saying it's going to be trading between 3 to 4%. Do we get to 3%? And what happens when we do, if we it, that's a very interesting question because I think that interest rates are going higher regardless of what the Federal Reserve Bank does. And that has to do with the supply and demand relationship in maturing treasuries. Other countries are also you know, st stopping their easing policies. The Federal Reserve owns two two and a half trillion dollars of u.s treasuries now when those mature the fed is not going to be buying mm -hmm. 
6.2 trillion of our treasuries. We now have a, a high, a historical high treasury debt, just crossed 21 trillion dollars. Right. 6.2 trillion of that is owned by foreign buyers, the largest of which are Saudi Arabia is number 13, mm -hmm. but China, China and Japan. Yep. China and Japan are buying less treasuries. And we, we should talk about, because we're mourning in Australia, we should talk about China and the whole dynamic, yes. what China is trying to do. But, but you see, I don't the, think the bottom line, you see a treasury. Bottom line is, I don't think that tre the treasuries are going to be bought as much as they have been by China and Japan. Okay. They already are not being bought the way they were by Saudi Arabia because Saudi, we're not buying Saudi oil. Right. Actually, China is buying Saudi oil, and it's doing it denominated in one, which is a very serious thing. So bottom line, uh, Dan, is that if we're looking for the next crisis, it could be in the Treasury markets then? I actually think it could, it could be led by okay. rate increases having to do with supply and demand as Treasuries. Mm -hmm. I think 15 or more trillion yep. of Treasuries are going to mature in the next five years. As those mature, they're going to have to come at higher rates to clear demand, and that's going to move interest rates up across the board. We have not reduced. We yeah. have not reduced debt in the whole world, and certainly not in the United States since the financial crisis. All we've done is move it from household balance sheets yes. to corporate balance sheets and sovereign balance sheets. When interest rates go higher, there's going to be a problem in the in the corporate credit markets too. Uh, Dan, just before we go, though, um, uh, where are we going? <laughs> just got here. <laughs> Let's talk about U.S. China, because you say, and as you rightly say, I mean, this is being broadcast into the Asia region, and China is just, you know, you've got to talk about the anchor there. Uh, you say the U.S. and China rivalry, I guess we could call it the economic rivalry, if managed well, presents a great opportunity. What do you mean, managed well? What I mean is. What we see as a rivalry and what we describe as a rivalry these days is really a codependency. The relationship between the United States and the Soviet Union, uh, sorry, and China has mm -hmm. been, until recently, we have been a consumer of low-priced low Chinese manufacturing. Right. Okay? They've been a consumer of our treasuries. China's long-term goal, the arc of their entire multi-decade reform process is ultimately been geared toward empowering the Chinese consumer. The Chinese need to revalue their currency and they're on the road to doing that and then they will be a consumer of the world's production in addition to their own. The world's production includes U.S. exports. So it's going to be more expensive for us to buy Chinese product, it's going to be less expensive for them to buy American product and that's actually really what Donald Trump is looking toward is more balanced trade. Now, right. if we start a tit-for-tat action and reaction and retaliation, we'll have a disorderly trade process with protectionist barriers yeah. and mercantilist policies in both countries, not something I think that either country is, is anxious to see. Yeah. I don't take Donald Trump's opening bids on things all that seriously. Yeah. That's his style. He comes hard out of the gate and then he likes to sit down and negotiate to compromise and the Chinese for their part have shown a lot of restraint and maturity right. in the face of the general conversations because I believe they're looking forward to sitting down and negotiating fair outcomes here. Well, Everybody's benefit, both sides.